There's a cry in the air. I'll catch you as before. I am the dragonfly hunter. And there again is the circle. There again is the circle. The effort, see, the complete effort to be beautiful. And being beautiful, well, the whole of anything is supposed to be silently understood. Only if it is the effort, not the complete thing, but the effort. The effort is the beauty. The effort. How long is waiting? How short is life? Blue morning glories. And that morning, or that moment, when it didn't really matter to live or die, it really didn't matter to live or die, that suspended animation, the suspended animation of being, that is true perfection. Coin on a plate, bird in a cage, a summer festival. And every man becomes free within the bounds of his own shackles. The real freedom, the true freedom, is concept. Keeper of their own, faces of life, you are yawning cat. The effort to be me. Oh, what an effort, what an effort. The effort to be me. The quest, the curiosity. And there again, the perfection of effort. The perfection of effort. Descending down the road, I'll bring you up. Though you may not know. And as she walked, she became a part of the divine canvas upon which the immortal hand of God painted his seasonal masterpiece to beautify his domain. She had worn well her garment of flesh of 23 years, for it was yet tender and ripe, as if still holding the perfumed dampness of a mother's womb. Happy chattering. Four turned and melted into mist. It's but a vapor, truly a vapor. The dream, the quest for reality, the taut desperation, the quest for reality. Coin on a plate, a bird in a cage, a summer festival. During New Year's, I think it's one of the biggest days. We carry on for two, three days, and we eat lots of different kinds of food, such as specially prepared rice cakes, bean curds, red carp, rice wine, lotus roots, red caviar. And this is a pretty food, you know, and it's all decorated. And sushi, sashimi. And it's such an artistic thing they go through just to prepare one dish. It was one of the exciting, one of the exciting days because uh, you play many games such as you fly kites, play cards, you get gifts, and you see dragon dances. And my parents would take us to friend's house and pay a greeting to them, such as Happy New Year. And, uh, you hand them a token, money or present, and you go around the whole day almost paying visits to many people. I think it's nice. Keeper of their own basis of life, you old yawning cat. In Japan, people we go fishing for a two-inch fish with a long 10-foot uh, bamboo pole, 10 to 15 feet bamboo pole, just to catch this two-inch fish. But they, they enjoy this doing this more than catching the bigger fish because this little fish with this thin, long bamboo pole it gave you more fight than any other fish did in a, in a, in a weird, in a smaller way but like, you know how you could 
become smaller and have just as much fun. And th that this is what they did. And this is what they always do. <laughs> Catch this two inch fish. <laughs> There's a cry in the air. I'll catch you as before. I am the dragon island. <laughs> Did you ever see an ant eating? It's an ant eater, but it's not a big ant eater. Like animal, it's, a, it's like another insect and it lives like in the ground. And it builds a wall, sort of out of a heavily sand, like not fine sand, but like rounded sand. And it builds sort of like a volcano kind of mountain. And it stays in the middle, you know, in the bottom. And when the ant climbs to the top of it, he would just dig one part of the bottom rock. The whole dirt pile would just fall down. And the ant, ant would just roll down to the bottom. And Every time he tries to climb up, he'll just fling a little more dirt and that will roll down into the hole. and eventually he gets eaten up. <laughs> exclaiming and so happy about it was so much a part of the dog that there was a certain tolerance, a certain patient, gentle tolerance on the part of the dog that allowed the dog to sit and wait until I had exhausted this exhilaration. discovering it 
And maybe that's the true journey through life. The discovering that miracle. One of the farmer went out into the fields and my brother and I were at the house. When he came home, he brought us this snake, which was a poison snake, but he had carried it all the way home alive. When he came home, he just cut his head off and tore the skin right off his back in one shot. Took out the hearts and the intestines and he put the heart in his hand and the heart was still pumping, still moving. And he said to my brother, yeah, swallow this, it'll make you stronger. And then he hesitated, but he swallowed it. And I didn't know what to do. <laughs> But I wanted, I wanted, there was only one heart. <laughs> anyway, I watched this bone like thing, and it was still moving. <laughs> and he hung it up to let it dry, because he, he wanted to eat it after it dried up, because it's supposed to taste good. And I watched this thing move for around three, four hours in amazement <laughs> that it kept on moving. Did you ever have a, a pregnant dog? And how far removed we are from that reality, from that true reality. I remember too, taking blades of grass and not being so fascinated by the grass itself or the blade of grass. But the fact that I could actually touch, I could touch, and I knew that I was touching the blade of grass. And then I took my fingers and I rubbed them across the grass. And it, again, it wasn't the grass that so excited me, but the fact that I could touch and that too is the miracle of reality and I would look again at my fingertips and I would rub the thumb against the other fingers perhaps words don't really express it but I would think and sometimes aloud I would say I can touch I can touch I can touch And then I would look, and I would say, I could see, I can see, I can see. All the miracle of reality. And then, I guess the most exciting part, the most exciting circumstance, was when I found out I could love. I could love, I could feel love. And that became the most beautiful miracle of reality. And it's probably the miracle that I'll never be able to quite absorb or ever become used to. And perhaps because love is the true most complete miracle of reality perhaps is the lost chord that we always speak of or feel the absence of and what we're constantly in pursuit of.
why did you do that? I just felt like it, mommy. I just felt like it. And so with love, it's like the, the mother that embraces all and everything that makes everything feel so secure. And without it, there's so much insecurity. And even now, as I think about it, about discovering love, even now, you try to drink of it, and the thirst goes on. Japan. I didn't hear about the atom bomb so much until they started testing in the Bikini Islands once again. And uh, the fishermen who were fishing for uh, tuna nearby the islands, and uh, all of a sudden there was white flakes like falling like snow everywhere on, around the boat and everything. And uh, the fishermen they didn't know what it was and they thought it was snow. So uh, they, they grabbed the snow. And they would eat some as, as water, because it tastes good and everything. After a few days, they started losing hair, skin started peeling, and many died. And the, and the tunas were also uh, poisonous, and it has killed many people in Japan. That's when it really hit me about the atom bomb, because uh. The first atom bomb I was born, and the uh, the horror of it. Although I've seen in films and read about them, I was not born, or I was not grown enough to read about it. One of my friends I met here has t- has told me about. It. He was a uh, hundred miles away when the atom bomb was dropped in Hiroshima. And he was walking home from school, and all of a sudden, everybody around him started to bleed from their noses, including him. And he didn't even know what happened until later on, you know, that it was Adam Bomb. You ever hunt dragonflies? Many times. <laughs> Don't you catch think, them again? <laughs> Don't you think hunting dragonflies? It's like hunting for something else. Don't you think that is the curiosity that motivates the pursuit of the dragonfly? I guess so. To me, it always meant like the pursuit of beauty, the pursuit of an ideal, chasing butterflies. I think our life pattern is like that. We chase beautiful things. And they're ever so elusive. We reach out. You remember as kids, we would grab a butterfly, examine it so completely. And even that wasn't enough. That didn't satisfy. And we went to sleep at night, woke up the next morning, and we were in pursuit of it again. The appetite was never satisfied. Like a, an active waiting, because even while we wait, we still, in a sense, reach out. Perhaps with the mind, that which we don't reach out for, with the hand, we seem to reach out for the mind. So maybe it's a sort of active waiting. And as you said. Perhaps it is completed. And in the midst of that happiness, 
We don't care whether it is completeness or not. Maybe that's what true completeness is. Not being aware of it. Or being so busy with oneself and the discovery of oneself that we're not concerned about how complete it is. As a little boy, the dreams, perhaps the beginning, maybe the dream is the beginning of the curiosity of asking I and why. How many times did you ask yourself that? I and why. Maybe in that moment or many moments of happiness, maybe it's answered. I, why? Maybe the answer is received so many, many times. And only at a particular moment or particular moments do we absorb it. There is the answer. And maybe those particular moments mean complete discovery of oneself. And when we are without the answer, perhaps it is because we have removed ourselves from ourselves. And we enter into the, the net of confusion. We start groping again, trying to find footing. It's like forgetting that as we walk on the cement. There is grass, there is grass beneath it. And as we walk, maybe we do remember, recall the fact that there is grass under it. We come closer to ourselves again. Could you feel the, the grass? a feeling of life. And what about the dreams? As I fish, I'll be always thinking about the place I was before. But then after a while, we'll be thinking the place we're gonna go next. In school we went to many picnics. And one time we went to see the Buddha great big, big Buddha where, where one person could climb into the nostril of the Buddha. The whole surroundings consists of pagodas, temples, thousands of uh, statues of uh, eight-handed Buddhas. Mysterious sort of religious feeling and aroma, I could still feel this. I've passed by Mount Fuji many times because Mount Fuji, you could see from almost anywhere in Tokyo. And its top is capped with the snow. And it looks like a sort of like mountain of ice cream. Right? 